Well, welcome back. The intention of this next lecture is to give you an overview of the biological diversity of tropical coastal ecosystems and introduce the major types of organisms. Now, given that the biological diversity of tropical coastal ecosystems probably stretches beyond a million species, our treatment here will be more a brief introduction to the major types of organisms as opposed to an in-depth treatment. If you're interested in learning more, there are a large number of universities and organisations which offer courses and other opportunities to learn about these organisms that will be introduced here. Well, let's start with a very simple question. How many species are there in tropical coastal ecosystems? The answer to this question is not actually known. However, biodiversity experts have estimated that 25% of all known marine species are found in and around tropical coastal ecosystems, and that the number may exceed a million when bacteria and microbes and the full range of organisms is taken into account. The rate of discovery of new species is very informative, with over 100 fish species, for example, being described each year. Our knowledge is particularly poor in some environments, such as mesophotic areas, where the depth makes it hard for scientists to become regular visitors. Mesothotic reefs stretch from around 30 metres down to 150 metres and are fascinating regions which are poorly known to science. Let's now take a brief look at the organisms one can find on tropical coastal ecosystems. Here is a broad overview of the categories of organisms that you're likely to find on tropical coastal ecosystems. One of the simplest organisms that are found on tropical coastal ecosystems are the nitrogen-fixing cyanobacteria. Despite their simplicity, cyanobacteria are incredibly important to the nutrient budget of tropical coastal ecosystems. Here they are able to fix nitrogen from the atmosphere using an enzyme known as nitrogenase, which is found in many cyanobacterial species and in large cells known as heterocysts. Every so often, waterborne cyanobacteria can bloom around places like coral reefs, providing dense concentrations of brown species known as trichodesmium, which is often referred to as sea sawdust. Cyanobacteria are important components of the surface layers of sediments and rocks and may fix an enormous amount of nitrogen as part of their daily activities. Cyanobacteria often appear as discoloration of dead coral and sediment surfaces, even intertidal beach rock, as shown here in this picture from Heron Island. Experiments done by Professor Michael Kuhl from the University of Copenhagen has shown that beach rock releases oxygen when it's exposed to sunlight and after it has been moistened by seawater again. This is due to cyanobacteria having established a presence in the outer layers of the beach rock. If you're interested, you might consider having a look at the papers by Professor Kuhl and his colleagues. Part of the diversity of life on coral reefs is taken up by a huge number of single-celled photosynthetic plant-like organisms, which are collectively known as microalgae. These tiny plants have a range of different photosynthetic pigments and include organisms such as green microalgae, diatoms, and other single-celled eukaryotic photosynthetic organisms. Some of these organisms have beautiful shells, which make magnificent photographs under the microscope. Microalgae also provide enormous amounts of primary production within tropical coastal ecosystems as part of assemblages such as benthic microalgal communities, which cover many subtidal rocks and surfaces. There are three types of macroalgae or seaweeds that occur worldwide within tropical coastal ecosystems. Each group is distinct from the others in terms of the types of pigments that they have in their tissues. Whereas all of them have chlorophyll, each of the different groups tends to have pigments that colour their tissues in various ways described, red, brown and green. One of the most important ecological interactions within some tropical coastal ecosystems is the competition between macroalgae and other organisms. For example, on coral reefs, macroalgae and corals are usually engaged in a fierce competition for space, which is modulated by the presence or absence of other organisms, such as grazers. 
While coral reef macroalgae show high rates of primary production and provide habitat and food for many species, they can also become a threat to coral reefs under certain conditions. Algae, by competing for space using toxins and by abrading corals with their fronds, cause damage to corals. Under increased nutrients and reduced grazing, macroalgae can become the dominant benthic organism in tropical coastal ecosystems. We will be coming back to this theme in the next couple of weeks when you begin to hear from Professor Peter Mumby and other colleagues. Many macroalgae on coral reefs deposit calcium carbonate like other organisms such as corals. In some cases, much of the sand can be produced by calcifying green algae such as Halometa. Some red macroalgae also calcify, encrusting rocks, surfaces, mangrove roots and stones. And in the case of coral reefs, coral fragments are essentially glued together by red coralline algae to make a framework that consists of the reef. These ecological relationships will be revisited in later parts of the course. The last group of plant-like organisms associated with tropical coastal ecosystems are the marine angiosperms or flowering plants, which comprise principally of the seagrasses and mangroves. These two groups represent land plants that have re-evolved for life in the ocean. We'll be hearing a lot more about these organisms from Professor Kath Lovelock, who spent most of her career studying them. They are fascinating organisms in that they represent multiple lines of evolution that have ended in a very similar set of adaptations for life in the ocean. Marine angiosperms, like mangroves, are also extremely important to tropical coastlines by stabilising sediments, and providing habitat for fisheries and by protecting coastlines from storms and waves. Now take a moment to consider the concept of competition between macroalgae and corals. Read the paper by Terry Hughes and co-workers on phase shifts, herbivory and the resilience of coral reefs to climate change and explore your understanding of the interaction between macroalgae, corals and grazing fish. After that, Test your knowledge and understanding of the interaction between seaweeds, fish and climate change using the provided quiz.